Hi, welcome to another episode of Hot Takes. Nigel Farage has written a letter to Keir Starmer and he's demanding the truth. He wants to know and he wants Starmer to tell all of us in Britain the truth about migration and its effects on the economy, on our culture, on our, in, uh, our uh, resources, our infrastructure, the lot. Um, he wants to know what the numbers are, the real numbers, the true numbers. Uh, he wants to know how this is affecting our very way of life. He's written a letter, as I say, and I'm going to read you the letter because it's actually quite a good letter. Um, and I think it's just something that you should know. Um, but it goes to show what we're not being told. This letter, when you when you go through, just to show this is exactly what our governments are keeping from us. Now, if we can get them, I, I've, I've got no illusions that this information will not come. They will not let this information out because they daren't let this information out. But... You can still ask for it. So here's the letter that uh, Farage wrote to Starmer. Dear Prime Minister, as you know, according to the national polls, the British people consider immigration to be one of the most important issues facing this country. The overwhelming majority of ordinary people want to end the deliberate policy of mass, uncontrolled, legal immigration and regain control over illegal immigration. Just as a side point here at this point, I'm glad to see Nigel is using the word immigration and not migration and he's using illegal immigration and not that other weasel word terms that they keep coming up with. So tick for that one, Nigel. Anyway, getting back. Uh, this is causing a national crisis with public trust in politics and the system collapsing. According to new polling by Professor Matt Goodwin, only 6% of British people today say they trust politicians to tell them the truth. I'm presuming that that 6% are in mental institutions. Um, only 19% trust journalists, higher than I thought. And only 27% trust civil servants to do the same. This is weakening our democracy and society. We are writing to you because this crisis is being made worse by the fact that information is being withheld or deliberately concealed from the British public. I will also say, from my point of here, is also when they do release information, it can often be lies, as we've found out. So they will actually lie to your face. Uh, while other government departments across Europe and elsewhere, uh, sorry, while other governments across Europe and elsewhere are collecting and making more data available on the impact of immigration, government departments in the UK appear to be publishing less. Why is this? We demand that the British people are treated with the respect and decency they deserve and are asking for the release of the following data. Now, there's seven points he wants, and I'll go through them. One, data on the amount of income tax, national insurance contributions, tax credits and child benefit data by nationality and immigration status. Two, data on welfare claims by nationality and immigration status. Three, date on arrest dates and prisoner status by nationality and immigration status. Four, data on the sentencing of foreign nationals, including how many are repeat offenders. Five, detailed data on the financial cost per night of hotel accommodation for illegal immigrants and asylum seekers. Seven, data on spending programs such as the Refugee Integration Loan Scheme. Seven, finally, in addition to the above, we also demand an answer as to why the Office for National Statistics has discontinued analysis of our population by nationality and when will this resume? Most people in this country, he says, want this data to be collected and or released to the taxpayers. Recent polling in October 2024, again by Professor Matt Goodwin, 
finds that between 56 and 67% of British people support the government collecting and publishing this data on crime, welfare, taxation, use of National Health Service and housing and accommodation costs by nationality and immigration status. So we ask, when will it be made available to them? Well, I think we'd all like to know the answers to those questions. Absolutely. They're good questions. They're, they're fine questions to ask. But I'm afraid they are questions that are likely to never be answered by this government, nor a Conservative government. I think if reform became the government, I think that would be one of the first things they would publish. And then they would say, this is what we need to change. Whether they could change it or not is another matter. But I think if it's published, we the people would know. We, mean, we do know, don't we? We know the answers to these things in our hearts. We don't know the exact number. But we know. We see. We experience it. But it would be nice to have hard actual data and then once it's actually out there in the public uh, domain you can start saying things that are true and there's nothing they can do about it then oh you're stirring up hatred no i'm telling a fact this is a fact because facts aren't wrong you see you have that defense in law don't you that um, you can't say anything that you know, if it's a fact. And there we go. But that's why they'll never do it. Because they know if the truth come out, there'd be riots in the streets. Absolutely. Because we know. But there we go. So anyway, well done, Nigel. Um, good letter. I suspect um, the answer coming back will be very short, very curt, and very negative. I think you're going to be upset. I think you're going to find that they're going to release it. Um, and then I do hope he publishes the response as well. If he can get the response back, that would be interesting. But uh, that's even if they dare respond. No, we don't want to tell the people of Britain any of this because it would upset them. We're big boys. We can take it. Let me know what you think. Till next time, stay safe, stay well, and I will speak to you later, hopefully, especially when we get the answer. Bye.